Okay, we're supposed to find the volume of the solid bounded above by a sphere and below by a paraboloid. This particular question happens to come from uh, one of my uh, practice exams, uh, the practice exam uh, three. And so anyway, uh, they give us a good, huge hint uh, to use cylindrical. So we'll take that hint and run with it. We have a sphere, and we're bounded above by that, and a paraboloid, and we're bounded below by that. This is going to be a pretty bad drawing, but anyway, um, a paraboloid is a bowl shape. And that continues on out. And a sphere is going to be like a cap to that. They're going to have this kind of intersection going on. They want the volume inside, basically. And so this hint of using cylindrical is really helpful because we might think spherical, but we're going to use cylindrical. And in cylindrical, we first have to find the bounds on Z. And so there's a low bound on Z of the paraboloid, a high bound on Z of the sphere. We need to take these equations that are currently in uh, XYZ, Cartesian, and put them into cylindrical. Let's take the sphere equation. X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared equals to 9. X squared plus Y squared is R squared. So it's going to be that Z squared is 9 minus R squared, or that Z is the positive square root of that. The negative square root would be the lower, hemis lower hemisphere. So that's going to be the upper bound because it is the uh, sphere. The lower bound is the paraboloid. Uh, 8z is x squared plus y squared. And so we just divide by 8 and change this numerator to r squared. And so z is going to be r squared over 8. Okay, great. Next up, we have to figure out then um, what happens in the, in the xy plane. We, we, we need to find this intersection between the two and project that down onto the xy plane. And so where would these two guys intersect each other? The two equations, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 9, and 8z is x squared plus y squared. Taking these both into account, we can replace the x squared plus y squared with an 8z to solve them both at the same time. We have 8z plus the um, z squared should be equal to 9. That's a quadratic. z squared plus 8z minus 9 is 0. That factors to be z plus 9, z minus 1. Uh, this gives us a negative value of z, which we can disregard. z equals negative 9. This gives us z equals 1. It's at the plane z equals 1 where these will intersect each other. We take that and then project it down onto the xy plane. If z is 1, we can take either equation. Uh, it would probably be better to take this equation here. If z is 1, um, we'd have basically that, let's see. If z is 1, then 8z is supposed to be r squared, or 8 is r squared. And that's uh, r is uh, 2 root 2. So we get this circle called r equals 2 root 2. That's the, that's the shadow in the xy plane of, of the intersection between these two shapes. And we do that in polar. So we have uh, r is going out from 0 to the, uh, to the curve, so the bounds on r are 0 to 2 root 2, and the bounds on theta, of course, are the familiar 0 to 2 pi. And there we have it. Volume is supposed to be your triple integral dv. And so for us, then, volume is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi on theta, 0 to 2 root 2 on r, and r squared over 8 up to root of 9 minus r squared on z. We could do z first, but don't forget about the r in r dr d theta. That's how dv gets converted. 
So we can do this integral here, which is going to be the subtraction of these, right? We take z, the antiderivative, there's no nothing but a 1 there, and we, uh, we subtract. And that's going to be our integrand. So we go from 0 to 2 pi, then we go from 0 to 2 root 2, Okay, and we have the root of 9 minus r squared minus the r squared over 8. And that's evaluated. Oh, don't forget about the r. dr d theta. And what we notice is that, that because this is evaluated at all these numerical uh, limits of integration here, and the integrand is all in, all in terms of r, what we can do is to separate these. We can have it as the integral from 0 to 2 pi d theta. And we multiply that then by the integral from 0 to 2 root 2. We have r root 9 minus r squared minus r cubed over 8. And this is the last mystery for us. This guy is just going to be 2 pi. So the last thing that we have to, that we have to encounter is how to integrate this. Um, it's something that we should probably do on the next slide. Okay, now what do we do? Well, um, we have r times the root of 9 minus r squared. That's perfectly set up for a nice u substitution. Uh, let u be 9 minus r squared. du is minus, um, sorry, got ahead of myself there. Uh, du is uh, minus 2r dr. And so minus half of du is going to take the place of r dr. And we'll be integrating minus half of u to the half du. That'll be minus half u to the 3 halves, but times uh, 2 thirds. Or minus 1 third u to the 3 halves. Okay, now we have this other guy up here. I, for, I forgot to write out r cubed over, uh, was it over 4? Over 8. No, it was over 8. Uh, dr. So we integrate this guy to get minus one third um, the uh, nine minus r squared to the three halves power, and then from that we subtract r to the fourth over thirty two. Okay, great. And we evaluate that from 0 up to 2 root 2. And we multiply that by 2 pi. Okay, so here's what we're going to have. We're going to have uh, minus 1 third. We put the 2 root 2 in and square it, we get a 1. We put the 2 root 2 in and take it to the 4th power, squaring it and squaring it, we get a 64. Because uh, 2 root 2 squared is 8. So that's our upper limit evaluation. We'll simplify it. Our lower limit evaluation is zero, so it seems like it, normally you would give zero. Definitely this part gives zero, but this part doesn't. We get minus one third times nine to the three halves. Times the whole thing by two pi. So then, um, well, nine to the three halves is just uh, three squared to the three halves. So 3 cubed, or 27. So here's what we're looking at. Um, a minus 1 third, a minus a 2. This guy is a 27, but it's a minus a minus, so plus. Uh, we definitely could reduce that, but since this is over 3, let's go ahead and put everything over 3. And what we're going to have is a uh, minus 1 third. Uh, this guy will be minus uh, 6 thirds, and then 27 thirds. And then times the whole thing by uh, 2 pi. And that's going to be uh, 20 thirds times the 2 pi for a final answer of 40 pi 
over 3. Okay, that's the volume of that shape. Alright, great. 